Hello, Walker. How's it going? Good. Can you hear us? Yes. All right. Awesome. I can hear you. It's a good sign. Um, <laughs> well, you're uh, on the phone with Rockin' the Paradise. I'm Timothy Morris. And I'm Steve Morris. <laughs> and this is Rockin' the Paradise. So how All you right. doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. So where are you at, Walker? Um, I'm in... Uh, I'm in Franklin, Tennessee, which oh, cool. is just outside of Nashville. Sure, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. My so, son used to live in, uh, my oldest son used to live in Nashville, so. Okay. Um, uh, and we're in Maui, so. So pretty, it's it's 10 a.m. here. 10, a, 10 a.m. here. Tim just got up, so. <laughs> so anyway. So Walker, you're, you're a musician yourself, correct? Yes, I And am. what do you play? Um, I play just about anything you can put in my hands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, just growing up around music, I, uh, I did, um, obviously, well, actually, when I was growing up, um, my dad said, you know, before you learn anything, I want you to learn piano, because no, um, no. he never got the chance, really, to do that, except just pecking around on his own, so I took about five years of piano lessons in elementary school, which is really helpful, but at the time, I uh, was also, we had a home studio, so I had access to tons of guitars and drums and all that stuff, so I picked up all of that along the way, and I've just been uh, fine-tuning those as much as I can. I, I was in band in middle school and high school, awesome. I was in the drum line in high school, so, awesome. yeah. Yeah. So was your dad involved in your like learning of the instruments, or did you kind of just take it up on your own? And um... good question. I uh, <laughs> I think for the most part, he just kind of he showed me some stuff, but right. he uh, he definitely like he didn't show me a lot of the ropes necessarily, but he definitely pushed me to learn and stuff like that. Right. Um, and so I think he realized I had a lot of the same talents that he did. He didn't actually really do a lot of lessons when he was growing up either. And so, um, so yeah, I just kind of um, picked it up. And, of course, he was really excited about that and everything. So. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> That's uh, you and Tim here pretty much are describing pretty much the, <laughs> the same, same um, <laughs> the same musical experience. <laughs> yeah, I like showed yeah. him, okay, this is like an E and this is a mm. C, G, D, and here yeah. you go. Go yeah, on, I go had, I had E and <laughs> it was E major. And but you played drums like for, very, very early on. About for like, years. like year and almost, well, just short of two years old, started drums. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> cool, awesome. same for me. Nice. <laughs> so I was wondering, how often do you think you get reached out to about your dad? Hmm. Um, not terrible. Not a lot. I've I've never done like radio or anything. So yeah. This is this is the first. Oh, uh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, the the deal is, you know, for me, I'll, I'll just give you a little mic. Uh, what happened with a um, guitar player in my band just uh, you know we were always kind of complaining about new music and how crappy it was and uh, <laughs> and and he goes oh check this out I found this I found this guy and uh, and he said it's Owsley and look look for this you know and look for this album cover and um, so I'm like okay and uh, so I checked it out and and uh, then then found out that I'm like, man, that sounds like Chris McHugh. You know, it's like, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and I just loved it. I mean, it was like, it was unbelievable. And uh, for the longest time, I mean, for years, I thought that this guitar player in my band and I were the only ones that were like practically prostatizing, you know, prostatizing this, you know, because it's like, oh, listen to this, listen to this, you know, and and like no and you know, we never ran into anybody that already knew it, you know, yeah, and, yeah. until years later. And actually, it's funny because we, we just found out about the memorial, the Facebook memorial, 
page, and um, and then a, a friend a friend of mine that lived thirty miles down the road was on the site, and I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know that he listened to Owsley. You know, it's like, so it was just kind of funny that it took me years to know somebody that I knew <laughs> who that also knew also knew Owsley, and so that you know, probably a little long story for. For not much information. <laughs> <laughs> it has. It's been great to find like this community on you know through through the internet of of people that that get it. <laughs> yeah. Right. For and, sure. Yeah. Um, I I've only known it for about seven months, and actually it was on this show because Dad play Dad play Don't Know the Radio in Zavalo House, and as soon as the yeah. middle late, No Know the Radio hit. <laughs> <laughs> there was like there wasn't any turning back for me, um, <laughs> and uh, I just I do wonder what would have happened if that if that would have hit more people, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And so I was one wondering if you have like what are your ponderings on why it wasn't bigger? Because we we all have them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is telling. No, uh, I think in a way, um, it was kind of, it was kind of like a dying genre in a way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For the time, yeah. I mean, it was definitely somewhere in between '90s sort of power pop and 2000s sort of pop rock. Right. Um, you know, and there are some people who really found success around that time who just had a little bit of a different sound. I mean, obviously, he was really good friends with Ben Folds, who got really big, right. and, um, you know, uh, Miller Powers, who played bass. He's now an official member of Counting Crows, who had some success, right, who right. kind of have a similar sound, but are still more pop oriented. So I think it was a little. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, a little bit of timing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes and sense. But the real crime, really, um, the real crime was the semantics not getting at that time. That should not have been even getting released. That should have been huge. You know, yeah, I mean, it that, was, uh, that was. I the think real it was crime. a lot of. It was a lot of. Um, as far as the, as the semantics go, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I've learned a lot about this stuff through my mom. Um, Please as tell. time has gone Please on, tell. she's told me more and more, and she said that <laughs> um, when they signed to uh, when they signed to get when Semantic signed to Geffen, they uh, they essentially said it's too rock for pop and it's too pop for rock, and so they <laughs> didn't. It was sort of in between. Right. It was this sort of weird middle ground where they didn't really know how to market it and so they just said we'll just release it in Japan because they seem to really love this Japan, stuff. So. Japan's <laughs> gonna love it. <laughs> the Japanese and the Europeans have Get better it. musical taste than the Americans. That's pretty much all there is to it. That's just... <laughs> that's a exactly. Fact. <laughs> but yeah, I mean... What really ticks me off about that is that, you know, they, they say that, you know, it's like two rock, two pop, or, you know, for pop and whatever. But the, the stuff that they were subjecting us to and at that time, it just makes me mad. Was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. They couldn't give us Probably. something good. Yeah, to not find out about that record. Until, you know, until 2020, 20 some year, you know, 30 <laughs> years later, or whatever it was, but 25, mm -hmm. I guess. But um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I guess it's a classic, you know, real art and record company business screwing it over, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, story. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you'll probably find this interesting. I know my dad was like. My dad saw his worth um, in, you know, he was kind of like, why isn't my music getting the recognition that it should? I mean, they were playing the self-titled record. You know, he was technically getting some airtime, but it was like 
three in the morning when nobody was listening, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, right. And so, like, from what I understand, for the hard way, he was sort of going for more of a mainstream sound while still being himself. You know, there's a... I don't know if uh, Chris told this story at all, but he said, um, for Be With You, you know, he wanted the the first song to really be a... You know, he... He wanted it to be a single, and Chris was like, okay, well, you know what's really in is piccolo snares. And <laughs> my dad was like, my dad, I don't know if you want to record, if you want to include this in the recording, but... Well, I this think is, so. This said, is absolutely this is, perfect. This is gold. <laughs> this is gold, Jerry. This but is gold. he said, <laughs> he said, my dad was like, but piccolo snares are gay. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> Sure enough, if you play that song, you just hear, Yaka! you know, you hear that piccolo <laughs> sound. That's fantastic. So, um, you know, and, you know, he was trying to play off, you know, it was like Train was really big at that time, and, yeah. you know, right. Matchbox 20, and, you know, all these right. people who were rock guys, but they were playing well trained not really but you know they're playing more towards the pop side yeah and so he was wondering if that would be his avenue but you know, again like Maroon 5 very came out as a rock band and then they instantly went pop you know like in a, mm -hmm. in a very decided way what like way too decided in my opinion Dude, but, just, just too but, decided um, <clears throat> but yeah totally I can see that yeah that album definitely is is more the first, the first time I heard it I was like yeah it's definitely more 2000s alternative we talked with Chris style. a little bit about this and and the the first you know a lot of people talk about the first record and how genius it was and it is <laughs> and it is it's so but the great. second Absolutely. record like Tim and I were talking with Chris about how we don't even like to listen to any of the songs out of order because the order is is flawless it, it flows on, on both records but the second record just flows unbelievable he and he said we'll really work on that as far as that record you know flowing yeah so makes yeah that's sense. interesting yeah it's just it's an incredible listen where where the first album definitely hit harder and kind of has it hits you right away whereas yeah. the hard way kind of the hard it, way unfolds it, itself to it you. grows on you yeah, yeah it's like mm -hmm. yeah most certainly so walker how how old were you when will passed away I was. I just turned twelve. Twelve. Um, and so yeah. your brother would have been. Do the math. Nine. Uh huh. Okay. <clears throat> and so do you. Um, do you and your brother play some music together? Not really. Um, are you doing like a band thing or? Yeah. What kind of stuff are you? I do a lot of. Um, so, my dad would be rolling over in his grave to know this, but <laughs> I'm doing a lot of. Um, electronic production. Yeah, I've so, heard some of it. It's cool. Yeah. Um, so, that's sort of my avenue. Um, and my brother doesn't do quite a lot of music in terms of like writing his own music. He, um, it's just not something that he's really into and he has autism so it's kind of, okay. um, it's not really his thing, you, you know. You kind of have a thing mm -hmm. when you when you have autism. So yeah. his thing is, you know, he's um, he he was really in the he was in the drum line also in high school, and that was kind of his thing. And now he's going off to University of Alabama to be in their um, in their marching band. Oh, cool! Nice. So that's, that's awesome. kind of kind of his thing um, musically, but. He, uh, he's been trying to, he's actually lately been picking up the guitar and trying to teach himself some of Dad's old songs, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. 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 Tim's been playing, um, uh, doing some, some Facebook Live stuff, you know, yeah. during quarantine here, so. Um, I picked up Good Old Days right before the lockdown started. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, that's okay. been on his Facebook Lives. Yeah. That, so. That's just such a such an incredible song it's so fun to sing yeah <laughs> and i don't usually say that about songs because i don't like singing as much as <laughs> as much as playing <laughs> but uh, it is it's just it's so satisfying <laughs> it's 
so yeah. well written. So you were twelve. So you you had. Um, would would you say that you? When you my dad passed away when he was seventy six, and and the thing that I learned was that no matter how much time you have with somebody, it's never enough. Um, and so you had some quality time, obviously, with him. Not not mm -hmm. not nearly enough, but but uh, what were some of your what what are some of your fond memories? Um, he was and. If you ask anybody, he was hilarious. Um, <laughs> he was incredible at impressions. He he was a really good storyteller. What were some of his good impressions? Um. Oh gosh. <laughs> um. Well, some of them just involved. Well, <laughs> he did a mean prior, uh, <laughs> which is not very. <laughs> <laughs> Tooth, but um, he would do. I mean, when he was like, when he was a kid, he like at all of his parents' dinner parties, they would get him to do the whole Richard Pryor really thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he was like, you know, he was he's like about the same age as me. So Richard Pryor was a, Richard Pryor was a big deal. Right? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, it was stuff like that where it was like. I probably shouldn't advertise that, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just stuff like that. And um, he loved, yeah, he loved telling good stories and holding court. Um, yeah. And yeah, he was a really big personality, and anybody that knows him will will tell you that, um, for better or for worse. It, <laughs> um, it had its ups and downs for sure, but. Um, but the, yeah, the word so, that Chris kept using was intense. Would you agree with absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. And just like he wanted, yeah, he was like a little bit loud and a little bit of a close talker, <laughs> and just like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't know if Chris mentioned this, but he was very like perfectionist about yeah. his the way he wanted things to sound and and everything like that and um so yeah he was he was an interesting character for sure hmm. um you know i i don't remember you know i remember some but obviously yeah right um not a whole lot um just cuz i was su super little when when like most of my time with him was spent so um, but yeah, just tons of fun and, you know, love to keep everybody entertained. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you happen to have any early memories of going to gigs of his? Um, I'm trying to think. So I went to, he would do a lot of like weekend tours with Amy Grant and yeah. I would go, I would go to those. Um, just because I was a little bit older and I got to sleep on the tour bus and that kind of thing, <laughs> just, for, just for like two nights or whatever, it was kind of right. fun to sit yeah. sit backstage or whatever. Um, and um, so that was always fun. The only memory of like doing things involved with his music was um, was I re I remember being in the studio during the hard way um i remember being in the sound kitchen studio and uh i just remember i have a vivid memory of them recording um band on the run yeah with, um which i love that version it's amazing it, we were it's just arguably talking better than the ago. original that, that belongs in one of those that possibly could be better than the original exactly yeah um, yeah <laughs> so i remember that and and there was, you know, they had the studio chairs in there. And while they were recording, you know, I'm just sitting in there with my mom, J.R. McNeely, who's the engineer, and then me. And I'm just in one of the studio chairs spinning around. <laughs> <laughs> so. See, That's cool. It's funny because when I was about the same age, Dad and, Dad and um, Joe and Harry Bailey's Transport were working on 
their first album, and I and I have a couple of vivid memories of the studio too. Oh yeah. So I was so I was wondering if it's the same kind of thing, and that's exactly the kind of thing I would remember. <laughs> just exactly. Up there. <laughs> and and that was always you know we had a home studio as well that he built, um, and so um, I was often <clears throat> in the studio when those were happening. So all of his like production credits. Um, I was probably in the studio at one point or another. I remember. <laughs> That's cool. I remember at that ch- trying to come up with my own rhymes for the lines there in a songwriting session that we had <laughs> at the house, and um, you know, and I can't remember who it was that he was writing with, but he was like, "Hey, this kid, this kid's onto something," but it was like some stupid rhyme, you know, <laughs> now, which is kind of silly. Now this is really funny because. Um, like during when when the kids were growing up, my my best lyrics came from like just little kind of stupid things that they would say. Uh-huh. And I'd be like, "That's a lyric," <laughs> you know. It's like that's that's really funny to me. I, well, I was just thinking about how um, the uh, the opening song on the that Harry Billy's Transport album was called Philosophy, and it was originally Tim's philosophy. Originally called Tim's philosophy because he said. I said, everybody does, but some people don't. Yeah, he's like, everybody does, but some people don't. And I'm like, ooh, that's a great ooh. lyric, man. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I, one of the memories I have in the studio, I remember just sitting down in the corner with my arms crossed, like, pouting. And and I thought the line at the end, because it's just philosophy repeated, I thought the line was, who has the fee? <laughs> Yeah. And I was mad. I was I was so mad that day. Who knows why? I was four years old, and and I'm sitting sitting there. And I go, who has the fee? Who has the fee? Yeah. And then Dad's like, get out of here, <laughs> or, or whatever. You gotta go. And so I was so unappreciative yeah. of the song I inspired because I didn't know that for another ten years. <laughs> I've known the song all my life. <laughs> So, um, like, I, well, I know t- you wanted to ask if you if you know where some of the old the old gear was, like oh, the, the yeah. Les Paul and the. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. We're actually um, next week. So essentially, when he passed away, they essentially packed up his entire house and they put it in a storage unit down in this hometown, um, <laughs> and. We're actually next week going to go through it because um, really? we haven't really? really touched it. So all of the like guitars and stuff, I believe, are at my uncle's house. And then like, but my mom was like, what's in there? And I was like, literally everything. I mean, like <laughs> outboard gear and like road cases and no way, all of that stuff. Yeah, like I can't imagine what it'll be like to go through that my friend actually he uh he does a he's working on a podcast and and uh he wanted to do a feature on my dad as well and he was like i want to come out there with a recorder and just and just record you finding everything that's in that there that would be fantastic yeah definitely that would be awesome so, <laughs> um so that'll be cool um yeah i'm excited for that <laughs> all it's been there all these years huh just yeah um yeah, it's been there, and wow. we're in the process of moving right now into the city of Nashville, and so we thought, what better time to yeah figure out what's in there? Um, but it's literally the last time I was in there was like nine years ago or something when I was thirteen or something, and I literally went in there and it was like a box of silverware, and then an SSL like like <laughs> like it's literally all like there's no rhyme or reason like oh, to what's man. in there or not an SSL probably Neve he loved Neve yeah but, right okay yeah. um but yeah you get the idea like yeah. there was no rhyme or reason or like oh maybe we should throw this out it's crap or you know so maybe he- we should take care of this or whatever I mean it's, it's all in there everything's safe but it's just sort of havoc in there so yeah. it's going to take a couple of days to figure out what's in there and yeah so with that it'll be a project like, for sure you know vintage amps and stuff like that that he had oh yeah it's all um, in there. i have one of them um i have a couple of like 
guitars and amps of his um, at my house and stuff. I've actually been playing. He has a, it's like a 1984 P bass that I've been carrying around. That's like the bass that I have, and I I love it. I've got a little Fender, Fender Vibrachamp amp, and got, he got a guitar from PRS at one point, which is kind of cool, and Nice. Um, and a uh, a old uh, I think it's a 1965 B25 that I have <laughs> in my hands. Nice. Which uh, I'm letting a friend borrow really quick. But uh, but yeah, there's there's tons of other stuff that I haven't even touched. So. So he had a I think Chris said he had a Ludwig kit in the studio. Yeah. Um, Is that in storage or does somebody have that? Um, we have that actually. Awesome. It's uh, it's sort of a hodgepodge. It's like a well, I don't know what it is. Let me look at it. It's <laughs> it's a we have a Slingerland kick, which I think Chris gave us. Yeah, because he, we have yeah, Chris said something about Slingerland. Yeah, and then I don't know what the snare is. I think he might have given it to us too, or maybe it was my dad's. Um, and then, and I think it's honestly having to look, um, I haven't touched these things in so long. <laughs> uh, crap. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Hold on. Ludwig snare. Yep. All cool. right. And then, um, and then the two toms actually, uh, Paul Hager went us, and they actually belong to Miley Cyrus's drummer. Yeah. So that's kind of a weird. And who is that? Um, I actually don't remember his okay. name, but it was like, but he was like, oh, I just have these. Like, we can use them to cut stuff in your studio or whatever. So we've had them in our studio for so long, and so now we're like trying to arrange it to where Paul can get it to this guy and. It's a big ordeal because we don't want to have to move them. Right, <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tim, Tim's dream is to make a documentary oh, yeah. on your on your dad and his it's music. A, it's an idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that would be somebody's got to do that at some point, don't you think? I mean, I'm sure there's somebody that would want to do it, so it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Right. I mean, I'm often, I'm often sort of like, oh yeah, people really, really like my dad's music. <laughs> I kind of forget about it. Yeah. Just because he's not like a household name or anything. Right, but right. I feel like the people that do love my dad's music really, really love my dad's really music. Love it. That's it's, it's very yeah. true. It's very true. I mean, I mean, like, well, ever in the last six months, other than Jellyfish, it's all I've listened to. Really, <laughs> like. <laughs> Um, that's another good one yeah <laughs> another story of a band that should have been huge yeah a documentary about them would be nice too yeah but um no but yeah it, i had i had the idea i think there's a story to tell you know i but i'm not a filmmaker by any means <laughs> so so we need to find one of those so it's just a concept <laughs> but <laughs> yeah the uh Jody Spence, who was one of the members of uh, the Semantics, was yeah. um, he's he's now making films, so I'm sure. Wow. You oh. know. Oh. oh. <laughs> mm. I don't know what he's doing now. He's in Nashville, but we just never see him. Hmm. Yeah. Um. So do you do you are you in contact with like Chris or Millard or? Anybody like that? Yeah, um, Miller, not so much. He's up in Richmond, Virginia now. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And uh, just doing stuff with the Crows, I think. Yeah. Um, and then Chris is here in Nashville. We see him every once in a while. Um, my mom and him have kept in touch. And yeah. Right. We've, uh, his son, actually, our kid, like his kids and me are like, kind of friends like still and so like his son was in the drum line with me in high school and, oh like, cool that's cool <laughs> all that stuff yeah he was incredible as you can imagine um <laughs> so um yeah he uh 
he isn't really drumming, I don't think, but he's got incredible pocket. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, I think um, Chris. Uh, I heard Chris say once that he, yeah, he doesn't really. None of his kids do anything commercially music-wise, but they're just all kind of they they they're all really good and dabble and. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, when I have yeah, that, so <laughs> so know. yeah, so <laughs> most of the people that you know were around during that time is are kind of like around, but we don't see them very much, you know. So. Yeah, um, right. So yeah, as it happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just you know a different era, so yeah, right. You know, there are new people in the mix and stuff. So definitely. When I had that documentary idea, I didn't think I'd be interviewing <laughs> Chris McHugh and you. <laughs> right, um, right. Within totally. three months. <laughs> The thing that hit me yeah. about interviewing Chris is that he's played on three of my favorite albums of all time, like top thirty. Yeah, <laughs> albums. yeah. And it didn't hit me till like the till uh, the end of the day. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. He, oh yeah. What? He, so what are they? So well, probably the, the Owsley stuff. Owsley's two albums and Whiteheart Freedom. <laughs> By who? Whiteheart. Whiteheart. Whiteheart was oh, the okay. band that he broke into Nashville with. Yeah, uh, from '85 to like '90, and then okay. um, and then which was which was, I really love that band. But then they put out a in '89 they put out a record '88 '89 um, called Freedom, and it was just it's a phenomenal record, um, and and it spawned you know. It spawned Tommy Sims, who goes on to play with Bruce Springsteen and and write, and, sure, uh, sure. and write, you know, <laughs> write all all kinds of great hits. And uh, Gordon Kennedy uh, came out of that band, um, you know. So I mean, oh, okay. and then Chris. So I mean, so it's like, yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty good, you know, that's a pretty good half of the band, you know. So. But uh, yeah, they, incredible that, album. That, the drumming, well, all the musicianship on that album is just phenomenal. Oh, I'm sure, and, and you know all those guys were in the picture at one point or another. I mean, Gordon helped write some of uh, some of the stuff on the hard way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I know, you know, I know the Sims, and you oh, know, yeah. I run into them <laughs> every once in a while. Yeah. So t- not on purpose. It's usually just like. And Kroger or whatever. <laughs> that so. was that was the band that sp- uh, you know that that uh, those guys started, but pretty much started in. Yeah, when they came to okay. Nashville. So uh, it was a, cr- a Christian CCM band, but man, they, the, like I said, the one record that they did, Freedom, Freedom was just <laughs> it was unbelievable. Awesome. <laughs> so what do you listen to? <laughs> <laughs> um, I listen to Anything. all kinds of stuff. Um, obviously, I'm 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 actually I'm actually um, yeah, I move in phases. Or I yeah, mean, I uh, I really my dad did not like jazz one bit, but I really like jazz. <laughs> um, the farthest he would go was Steely Dan, which, you know, <laughs> who can resist? Um, I think he said that at one point. He said, I, you know, I don't, I hate jazz, but, you know, Steely Dan's okay. So <laughs> There's actually um, something on YouTube of him doing a cover of some Steely Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. my old school. He really yeah, yeah, that yeah right. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I'm kind of getting back into them a little bit. Um, some Donald Fagan solo stuff, but... Yeah, I mean, I listened to... Don Fagan's solo um, stuff, the the one that was recorded in, I think, 93 was recorded here on Maui. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't remember the name of it, though. So sorry about that, guys, that that worked on it. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, the, the, um, um, a, friend of, a friend of a friend of ours uh, here on Maui, he had a studio here that uh, actually Becker built... And then F- and then Fagan recorded a uh, solo album in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, right here. So. Pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Cool. But cool. yeah, I listen to that stuff. I listen to a lot of 
electronic stuff and I mean a lot of people have different I mean surprisingly the electronic genre is very diverse so yeah it's a lot of uh I listen to a lot of hip-hop and um so yeah all the stuff that my dad didn't like I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well that's never happened before a son listening to stuff that his dad doesn't like <laughs> totally. Who knew? Um, yeah, I mean, my dad started to started to get into it. I mean, towards towards the end, he actually really liked the uh, the Owl City record that really. Oh was yeah, popular. yeah, yeah. Owl City's pretty good. And yeah. he liked like if you've heard of Image and Heap, he really liked that. Like he liked the really like smart stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, he could appreciate it, even though he didn't really, you know, get into it himself. So. Um, so yeah, a lot of that and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I don't listen to a lot of country though, so. <laughs> would he, but would he listen to a lot, lot of stuff around the house? <laughs> would he listen to a lot of stuff around the house or, or was he more like. Yeah. And like we would, you know, like if we were on a drive or something like that, he would, you know, play a lot of, um, actually a lot a lot of time then he would pump through the headphones some song like on iTunes or whatever it, whether it was like you know uh, do you know the song um, Love Fool by the Cardigans he really liked that song oh, really? you know that song I've heard, the, heard uh, it but I'm, I don't really know the, it. Uh, love me love me say that you love me. he really loved that song <laughs> oh yeah, that song. yeah. Um, or like you know No Doubt or like Zeppelin or you know he played all kinds of stuff and he would just you know watch me try to play along or whatever right <laughs> cool nice awesome yeah so what was well we joined we joined the 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 memorial group and then two days after you sold the master tapes um, <laughs> right, right after we're like that just happened. <laughs> you know, we're like, what? That's, that's happening happen. right now. Uh, so, what what was the decision process behind behind doing that? Well, we had about three hundred pounds worth of tape in our garage, <laughs> and, and we didn't um, want that anymore. <laughs> and we're in the middle of moving, and you know, my dad, um, you know, Giant gave all of the rights back to my dad after uh and so or yeah and then um and then as for the hard way stuff um i talked to to scott who who technically owns all that stuff which was his manager and you know like it was technically released on lakeview entertainment which was scott's uh management and he was like you know technically i own it but it's yours and you know if whatever you think is best you should do with it do with it mm-hmm. so um you know i just i some people i sent some to um to john fields who was like his really good friend out in uh he's he was in la and that's how my dad got a lot of his credits later um but then he's now in um he's now in minneapolis um, so I sent some to him and there's some guys around here that I talked to and there's some people in my dad's hometown, there's some people in, you know, nowhere, Ohio or whatever. So <laughs> there you know, um I just figured that we just figured that, you know, um people would really appreciate to be a part of the the story. Um and uh and so yeah. Um we were originally gonna do something with like we thought maybe we'll do it like kind of a charity thing like give to some charity or whatever but the shipping just became way too expensive and we were like okay we're not trying to make any money off of this just essentially pay for shipping right yeah so yeah that's basically it (laughs) um so i told people i said if i need it back you give me it back. I got them to sign something that said that. And don't, you know, don't try to sell anything off of it. And they were two-track two masters, right, is what... 
Some of them were. Um, there were a couple that were, but a lot of them were the original, like, 12-track 2-inch, 24-track 2-inch, like, the real deal. Um, and so I actually have all of the all of the audio off of it. We got it digitized right after my dad passed away. Okay, so nice. Yeah. we have multiple hard drives that have all those stuff as that's Pro good. Tools yeah, sessions. Awesome. So, it's it's um, interesting so, because... Yeah, it's interesting because like when he was in the music business, you know, it was still kind of the you know, it was still kind of the get signed and, and reach as many people as possible. Whereas yeah. like, like now, now kind of one of the business models anyway is to is to have like three thousand super fans that are going to give you a pretty large sum of money instead of a million people that are going to give you barely anything off of a stream. Uh, yeah. So I mean, and that's that's kind of the his that's kind of his fan base now. You got a few yeah. thousand people that are like kind of rabid fans, you know, like yeah. like would would have paid anything for anything that he did. Yeah. You know, and um, so it's it's just interesting how it's interesting how the business has changed, and you know, I, yeah. I just find it I find it, it does, interesting. It, it does seem like if he would have continued. <laughs> To um, to today that it might have yeah, to, and uh, it might have ended up now, working yeah. out better as far as um, yeah yeah as as for sure I, and I think I mean you don't have to like hesitate around saying that I okay. think <laughs> multiple times a week about all of the things that would have happened if yeah. he had been around today I mean Absolutely. you know it's like oh I graduated high school and now I graduated college and right. like he was in yeah. the drum line in high school and he would have flipped if. <laughs> you know, he was he was really obsessive about things. Like he, he would yeah. find a couple things and just really dig into them for a time. And whether that was like us watching videos of people doing impressions, or like, <laughs> or we had a thing where like we would just watch YouTube videos of card tricks or uh, <laughs> bluegrass music, or you know. Uh, you know john bonham drumming videos or whatever like right, he yeah. would just find something that we connected on and really really get into it for a time and, um so yeah i can't imagine like all of the things that if he were still around would have happened i mean yeah you know i don't know if he would have released more music i mean there's some that like didn't make it out that i know people are like that are like circling around the internet and stuff like that and people right. are like are they going to be released and you know i don't plan on doing anything with them they're there like um <laughs> yeah. you know if you dig if you dig through the internet you'll find them and stuff so especially on the memorial page and stuff like that right, i mean they're yeah. just like studio sessions and stuff like that so no i did um, read somewhere that he didn't really like um he didn't really like anything unfinished. He wanted it to be yes, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, yeah. So that probably was, would uh, be a good decision, you know, to not. Yeah. Not yeah, and that. and if you talk to, I'm sure Chris. I don't. I don't know if Chris said anything, but like a lot of the, he lost a lot of friends toward the end there, just because he was kind of an asshole, yeah. <laughs> um, and just like I know him and Chris weren't on very good terms when he passed away and stuff like that and now Chris um, told us Chris mentioned that Chris Chris did kind of allude to that but he also said that he that that uh Will reached out to him a few days before Oh okay and yeah. he seemed like and and Chris Chris said it seemed like he he felt like he needed to clean something up Yeah needed and to then, clean their relationship up kind of Yeah so Yeah and you'll um, I don't know if have you um, have you guys heard of Trevor Morgan? No, I know the. Okay, I've heard he that did name. he did a lot of writing with my dad. Yeah, um, yeah, and he. Cool. Oh, okay, that, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and he um, he actually released a song a few years ago, maybe like five years ago or something like that, and uh, it's called "The Bridge You Burned," oh, and yeah. it's. Uh, it's a song that he wrote about my dad the night that he, like the night of the day that he committed suicide. And 
it wow. is just essentially wow. talking about like the hook is essentially like I'm building I'm building the bridge you burned like you um my dad was gonna cut one of Trevor's songs on his or like a song that he and Trevor agreed was gonna be on Trevor's record my dad ended up trying to record for his record and that was sort of like bad blood like you know and so right, okay right so yeah kind of interesting um you know and i actually just my mom just showed me that song i'd never heard of it before but wow. i listened to it and it's it uh it cuts deep <laughs> for oh, yeah. sure yeah. wow so it, it, yeah i mean i guess for, as far as people that don't know he, he suffered from depression correct yeah he uh from what i understand i mean um yeah he was he was he was really depressed toward the end of his life and he uh i think i believe he sought help and i think he got prescribed something and you know if you've heard of anything that helps depression mm -hmm. they say this may increase thoughts of suicide and i think that's what happened was yeah. it was actually yeah. like really bad for him <laughs> and so um and so I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Well, I can just say um, somebody very close to me, same thing that when they were uh, prescribed uh, antidepressants, it just it made it worse. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it works yeah. for some people, but yeah, it, uh, it doesn't always. It can't. It can get worse. Definitely. Yeah. And so. that's that's one of the things that we like when we do play one of your dad's songs. We we kind of do bring that <clears throat> bring that up because I mean. Uh, you know, just people, you know, I, I just think that we need to be <clears throat> aware and, yeah. and, um, and be, um, and listen to people, you know, I mean, if they're, if yeah. they're reaching out, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And, and Use uh, as, a, as a reminder to check in on your, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like your quote all in your head and it's not quote all in your head. You know, I mean, it's, like, I mean yeah. it's just like, it's real and it's, uh, just something that, you know, needs to be dealt with and man when it gets bad there's just a lot of us just struggle on there, there's nothing you can do yeah you know? yeah so um yeah yeah, yeah I've, so uh, it's very, over it's the past very 10 years of of mm -hmm. therapy and you know youth group and all this stuff and go, i went to a christian college and i've learned <laughs> it's become really easy for me to just like share the deepest darkest things yeah. in my life <laughs> and people are like wow you don't seem affected by that at all and i'm like well practice makes perfect <laughs> <laughs> so. now, now, since you brought that up was your dad a christian yeah he uh because i asked that because you know not, not everybody in christian music is a christian you know and yeah yeah and so i mean he definitely played he, uh, on a lot of that stuff but i want i kind of wondered what his belief what? Yeah, he uh, he was, and and um, you know, me and my mom, my mom and I have talked recently, and he uh, or she said, you know, I don't really know what his like internal belief system was, um, but you know, he um, you know, we went to church and and did all the things. <laughs> Um, associated with that and he grew up Christian and right. um, you know we're in the south so it's kind of <laughs> assumed so um, so yeah I mean you know it's hard to know when you're a child what your dad yeah, actually right, believes right. in but you know I was actually listening to there's an interview I was on um, his like ASCAP thing like they have like an artist profile for yeah all of their artists and there was like a quick little interview and he was talking about be with you and i'd never heard this until like a month ago but he said you know he was like i want people to say is he talking about a girl or god right <laughs> and right. and because he says like he was like you know faith is really hard and it's really hard to it, it, it's really easy to want like a uh, 
out of body experience to prove God's existence or whatever. Yeah. And so he just like the chorus is just like I want to know what it feels to believe in something. Right, right. You know, and uh, and uh, so yeah, it, it was kind of interesting to hear that. I hadn't heard that before. Yeah, so that's cool. I haven't I haven't seen that either. I'll look that up. Yeah, <clears throat> that um, song hits hard. Yeah, it, it's you know. That's what a lot of people don't understand, though. If, I mean, even if you are a Christian and have strong faith and stuff, I mean, you know, it's not always easy, and there's still there's still physical, you know, physical chemical imbalances and things like that that you need to sure. do, you know, that that you suffer the consequences of, uh, whether whether you're saved or not, or you know, in belief. So. Yeah. Totally. Well, we maybe can I can figure out. Maybe I can figure out a, a funny story or a good story to uh I'm trying to think of yeah, like we'll a kind good of resume story now we'll kind of resume the resume the music conversation the radio conversation. what's everybody's <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> what's your favorite owsley song yeah what's your favorite song of his Ooh, i know it's hard um <laughs> I, can't. I couldn't tell you mine that i couldn't pick either <laughs> yeah what um, some of your favorites oh do you do you have any did he ever say to your mom or, or you or you or your brother, um, like, say like Zavolo House? Like, was that about somewhere? Oh or, yeah, I meant to ask Chris that. Or was or that? Was, yes, it is about somewhere. It it was it was the house on his block that everyone thought was haunted. Okay. So it actually was. I was wondering that. I wonder if he made it up artistically or if there yeah, was an actual place. Definitely. Yeah. And then like matriarch is about matriarch is about his um his grandmother yeah and uh which is not hard to figure <laughs> out but you know in the first verse when he says like i see christine avenue every night through the kitchen down the hallway in the bedroom on the right like that's true <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> like right his, it's not like, just a good rhyme was, it's actual figured. at his uh at his grandmother's house that's that is true <laughs> oh, wow that's really cool so, so that, yeah, so whenever we go it. down there, I drive past it. Oh wow! Yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. That's it's just a couple yeah. blocks from the cemetery where he's buried too. Oh really? Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the album's dedicated to her too, on the yeah the CD copy. Yeah, from what I know, she was she was a matriarch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't hear much about her though, besides. Yeah. Um, I don't hear much else though. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. What else? Um. Yeah, I mean, Good Old Days is kind of about Aniston, but I don't know how accurate it is. <laughs> yeah, how specific. <laughs> Those lyrics are in. They're just unbelievable. That is so, so good. good. <laughs> yeah. I actually I was digging through like I was digging through on YouTube and have you guys seen that like HBO thing yeah. that he did? It's on. So it's it funny because I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, Good old days is like played super live, like it's super still cool like too. distorted Les Paul guitar and like yeah. I never heard it like that before. Yeah, it was um, it was surprising. My, I asked, it just worked. I asked my mom about that and she was like, <laughs> "Yeah, he never switched guitars when he like." Yeah, wow. he just <laughs> all the always. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, whatever guitar he was playing, it was always that. Like he never <laughs> did like an acoustic or anything. It was just like, well, I guess we're doing this song freaking loud. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I appreciate that honestly. <laughs> like just just looking at that performance, it's like he kept it kept it live, live band energy all night. Yeah, you know, you get. Uh, it's also funny because he's sort of doing the, like the uh like i feel like on the record his his like tone is super like soft or whatever and yeah. kind of breathy but his like super punchy vocal tone on that recording is so funny like <laughs> where i used to know like <laughs> it's so funny to me <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> Yeah, and we just recently came across too um, 
the that when he did that radio acoustic radio thing. Oh yeah, the um nah. where he's like kind of just taking requests. And yeah. He, and he he like and um he's just like, "Well, you guys showed up. You tell me what to play." <laughs> I was like, "Whatever you want to hear, you know." And man, he just and what, you could, what was the one where he was just like, where he was just like, oh, like yeah, I don't remember that one. And yeah, then just was, launched into it anyway, and it was fine. Yeah, and he just um, he just like played everything because he was like, well, I don't know if I've ever done that on acoustic. Oh, was it was it? Rainy Day People, maybe. I can't no, remember it which one it was. But anyway, yeah. yeah, and he just he just plays it, you know, really yeah, well, just, and just did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of vocal tone, it, it it's funny. I uh, I just remembered when he did Band on the Run. Like, he was committed, but, like, he, um, my mom told me, like, him recording that, that vocal in the back half, like, it's so out of his range. She was like, you can't imagine his face trying to, like, yeah, oh, yeah. like, like, you know, trying to hit all those high notes, like, full voice. Oh, well, you got it. <laughs> she was like, his <laughs> eyes were so wide at the <laughs> He's like... <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can tell on those. There's weird stories records. like that that I I love, just yeah. like little tidbits. <laughs> yeah, and stuff. You yeah. can tell how committed he was to getting his vocal sound. <laughs> you can, yeah, like it's so specific from the the record record to record, and I can, yeah, you can definitely hear the commitment to getting it right. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Tim has no more questions. <laughs> but is there anything else? Um, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to add, Walker? Just throw it in. Um, okay, I'll give an example of like his incredible storytelling. Cool. Okay. So like <laughs> he, so so he would he really loved the album Gaucho by Steely Dan. Yeah, and so. The the story is about that about the title track on the album Gaucho. So Jeff Beccaro played drums on that song. Right. And my dad was obsessed with Jeff Beccaro just because oh. he had amazing He's pockets. Got good taste. <laughs> um, but uh, understandable. <laughs> right. Um, but he uh, the story goes that that the part the drum part for that song was so difficult that. Jeff just like got up and left. Right. And like, and then Fagan and Becker just sat up all night cutting the tape to splice together a perfect drum take, you know, out of many failed ones or whatever. But my dad, the way he tells that story, he thought it, he thought that was such an interesting story, but mm -hmm. he like exaggerated it a little bit. <laughs> and I had, I actually, I learned it his way and realized that that's sort of stretching the truth <laughs> but the way he tells that story is he says that Jeff Beccaro was like hey I have these perfect sticks that would sound really good on this song <laughs> and then he left <laughs> like I, it's just something funny to imagine he's like you know what I have something that would really make this song pop, and it's in my car. Let me go get those sticks really quick, and then just take off. <laughs> it's stuff like that where it's like it makes it a better story. Like it's an interesting story in and of itself, but it's like you know, it just hits better. <laughs> <laughs> it's just better than the truth. <laughs> Better than the truth. I'm trying to think of something else. Um, I mean, there's like stories that shouldn't be on video. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> there's a plethora. I can't well, think fine. of right we got now. One. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Walker, it's it's just been really cool. Yeah, this has awesome. been awesome. Really cool to talk to you, and, and um, thanks for thanks for agreeing so promptly. Yeah, and, <laughs> and just totally. And and do know that your your dad has has still has great influence, uh, especially musically on on a lot of people. 
Yeah, yeah. And we're two of them. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely two of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just yeah. What what a phenomenal talent. Can't For stop sure. listening to it. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> so. Just thankful that we have at least what we we have of the yeah definitely of his you know of his and recording. Chris, Chris was talking about how he was he was always at home and he was always at his best with a guitar in his hands. Um, yeah, and uh, and he's he kind he kind of alluded to like those records were the best were him at his best, yeah. you know, and yeah. so it is really cool that we have that, and that's what that's what people know, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, and I might, um, I uh, some uh, there's tape with something on it. Um, one of the tapes, one of the tapes that we had digitized, had I think it's the one for Rise. Yeah, has this other song that didn't make the record hmm. and obviously it's all just the raw tracks like it was essentially just a demo session but it's got chris's drums like it's got everything um so i'm wondering if if i go in and like mix it yeah right, if i can i'll like put it up or something like that i would i'd it's, like to hear uh, anything unreleased <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah. if there's an opportunity to <laughs> but yeah it's uh, people would. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a pretty fun song. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That'll uh, be. Yeah, a, I was. I would say. Yeah, I'd love projects. to hear anything, but you know, like you know, like we were talking a little bit earlier, you know, just um, you know, uh, you better than anybody probably can, um, and your mom can know what would what would be what well, he would what he would have wanted. wanted. And yeah, know, yeah. So yeah, that's so yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I guess uh, I don't know what I'm really trying and to I, say there, but but I, I think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We did it. It's a, funny when I was talking to Scott, his his old manager, who about the hard way. He was, or I just said like I would love to incorporate some of those tracks into my music, and he was like. Your dad would be elated to yeah, hear that you're messing yeah, around with sure. this stuff. You know, um, there's like, so on some of the ends of the tapes, there's just, uh, like, Chris doing sound checks. Just, like, with, you know, just like a few snare hits or whatever yeah. that he ended up using on some of the other tracks just because it sounded so good. Right. And it's right. like, I literally just have, like, 1999, you know, Chris McHugh just slapping a, nice. you know, a, a awesome. snare drum, you know. Nice. <laughs> so endless possibilities. Wow. Yeah, that definitely. Yeah, that's that's a sample that a lot of people would want. Right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm still trying to figure out what uh what. You know, I'm still trying to figure out if I want to, like, put all that out because, like, yeah. some of the people, you know, the people that got the tapes, if they're still viable, like, if they're still viable tapes, they may put them in a tape machine and digitize them themselves. And I'm like, well, in that case, should I just give them the, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what I want to do if I want to make yeah. all that stuff available or right, whatever. Right. But for now, it's yeah. it's in my hands. and for sure, And so... Out. <laughs> figure you out know. Thing to do. Um, you know, maybe I'll come to a point where, you know, I'll make that stuff available to people. But as for right now, they're in safekeeping. <laughs> right. right. Well, I, you know, as as a fa- I'm I'm a father of five, and and um, um, uh, almost just a couple years younger than your dad was. And um, it sounds like to me that your the his legacy's in good hands with you. You know, I mean, it just, it just sounds like you've got a you know very good head on your shoulders, and so yeah, that's really cool. Well, thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I just really I hope you had as much fun with this as we did. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. This was great. 
Yeah. I don't get to talk about them that much <laughs> around my friends. Just right. They don't, <laughs> right. They don't Even care. Even your friends don't say, hey, mm -hmm. tell us about your dad. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so I've been listening to uh, <laughs> your dad. I don't. I don't know that any of my friends ever asked me uh, about my dad. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's just kind of the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> fantastic. But, fantastic to get to talk to you, and uh, I think this is going to be a good show. It yeah. might it might have to be next week to get everything edited Yeah, we're together. probably going to probably but, gonna be um, this week but that. But yeah, I think Oh, like, I need it right now. <laughs> oh, all right. All right, whatever. But the two the two um semi full length interviews <laughs> will yeah. be will be on YouTube this week probably. And um Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll put we'll put everything up on the the memorial group try and reach the people that really care about it. And so how would people hear what you're doing these days? Um so I only have two songs out right now okay. on like streaming, uh, but I have a SoundCloud page. It's all under True Odyssey. Um, I came up with that name when I was in like eighth grade or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> but uh, I've changed it like five nine five times since then. But I decided it was the coolest of everything. <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah find that stuff and i'm coming out with some sort of ep soon awesome. i don't know this is a weird time <laughs> right but uh but yeah so, so true odyssey. check all that stuff true out odyssey. it sounds nothing like my dad's stuff <laughs> yeah right i'm sure a lot of his fans though would be interested in yeah, see what still. you're doing though either way yeah i've never like posted the link in the memorial page or anything yeah. but maybe i should just to see if people would appreciate it just to see yeah that I'm doing something with the talents that I've been given. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Good for you. Um, so that's True Odyssey, and that's the Instagram also, right? Yeah, True Odyssey Beats. Uh, right? Yeah, True Odyssey Beats on Instagram, and then True Odyssey Beats on SoundCloud, and then just True Odyssey on streaming. On streaming. Cool. Awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, if you want to check out what Tim here is doing, it's Timothy Morris Music. Okay, perfect. So yeah. yeah. I That's think you'll me. I think you will hear absolutely some of your dad's influence on this. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. It's been a pleasure, awesome. man. Yeah, it was yeah, man. really Good cool to talk to you. Yeah. And uh so we'll let you go. Yeah. All right. But thank you so Good much, Walker. All right. Have a great you day, everybody. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.